20-year-old climate activist Greta Thunberg was arrested in Germany while protesting the expansion of an open pit coal mine, and for absolutely no reason whatsoever, right-wing influencers are choosing to turn this arrest into a conspiracy theory. So on Twitter yesterday, the word staged was trending, and individuals like Ian Miles Chong made tweets like this, saying, yes, the Greta Thunberg arrest was staged for the establishment media. And this is the video that supposedly proves that her arrest was staged. Let's watch. The video that he shared debunks his own claim because after she was done talking to the press, they took her away. She was actually arrested. Now, I'll admit that the video is bizarre. It's weird to see somebody who the police arrested stop and let the press get photographs of them. But this is a celebrity. Do you think that the police are going to crack skulls while a bunch of cameras are watching? I mean, sure, in the United States, they are that brazen to do that. But when you have a celebrity in custody, this is why they allow this to happen. I'm not making excuses for it. I think that this behavior is really weird and they should treat everyone who they arrest equally, not that they should be arrested in the first place. But this doesn't prove that the event was staged. But somebody tried to explain this to Ian. And as you can see, it didn't go too well. They wrote, it wasn't a staged arrest. They just let the press take photos. I'll agree it's odd, but the arrest was real. They knew this footage would also get out. But Ian just responded by saying, the entire protest was staged. So that's what happens when you try to engage in good faith with a right winger. It goes in one ear and out the other. And I just feel like these right wing influencers don't really understand how power works because Ian claimed that this whole arrest was staged for establishment media. But what's the core function of establishment media? Their goal is to make money if we're talking about these capitalist institutions, right? Mainstream media. So the only reason why they talk about Greta is because she brings eyeballs, because she's popular with young people, right? And they want to draw in more viewers. But ultimately, if push comes to shove, they're siding with the fossil fuel industry that Greta Thunberg is speaking out against because those are the individuals who pay for advertising dollars on these networks. So I just don't understand if he understands the way that power works and whose side the establishment media is on, because I promise you it's not on the side of climate activists. Maybe some individual activists like Greta Thunberg can successfully draw in eyeballs, but that doesn't mean that they're on her side. But either way, that's besides the point. These police officers, they were absolutely brutal, as police often are, and even though you didn't see it, Greta Thunberg experienced it firsthand. As Common Dreams explains, Swedish climate activist Greta Thunberg was among the demonstrators detained by German police on Tuesday while protesting the destruction of the village Lutzeroth to expand an open pit coal mine. After arriving in Germany last week to support local campaigners battling the expansion, 20-year-old Thunberg joined activists staging a sit-in nearly six miles from the Lutzeroth at the edge of the mine owned by energy utility RWE. Greta Thunberg was part of a group of activists who rushed towards the edge. However, she was then stopped and carried by us with this group out of the immediate danger area to establish their identity, a spokesperson for Aiken Police told Reuters, noting that one activist jumped into the mine. As Common Dreams previously reported while visiting Lutzeroth on Friday, Thunberg said it was horrible to see what's happening here and called out the outrageous police violence occurring in the area. Quote, we expect to show what people power looks like, what democracy looks like, she vowed. When governments and corporations are acting like this, destroying the environment, putting countless people at risk, the people step up. Now, to demonstrate what she's talking about here, police were shoving activists when they were binded together, including Greta Thunberg, because they were trying to forcibly remove them from this area where they were staging this protest. Let's watch. <laughs>
Now, what you saw there didn't even scratch the surface. As the New York Times reports, on Saturday, an estimated 15,000 climate activists, including Greta Thunberg, staged a march in the area with police using water cannons and nightsticks to prevent protesters from charging the site. So police expectedly brutalized peaceful protesters. And this is a common phenomenon around the globe. We often see indigenous people who are protesting, protecting their own water, like at Standing Rock, and people of color, they bear the brunt of the brutalization. Now, Greta Thunberg saw that herself, but I'm assuming that because she brought a lot of eyeballs to this protest and got people to talk about this, maybe when the cameras were on, the police were more restrained, knowing that this would be broadcasted and knowing that it would be a scandal. So contrary to popular belief, these protesters were brutalized and the police were absolutely ruthless. But in spite of that, the protesters were relentless despite knowing what they would be met with. What's interesting about this is in order to expand the coal pit, they had to hollow out a small town and the protesters were trying to prevent that from happening. And their tactics had been successful only up until a certain point. As the New York Times explains, in a matter of days this past week, more than 1,000 police officers cleared out the hundreds of climate activists who had sworn to protect the small village, once home to 90 people but no church, which was scheduled to be raised as part of a sprawling open pit coal mine in western Germany. For years, environmental activists had hoped to forestall the fate of Lutzerath, possibly the last of hundreds of villages in Germany, to fall to open pit mining since World War II. For a while, it seemed that the activists would succeed. But this year, the political winds and public sentiment shifted against them. Europe's energy crisis, ushered in by the war in Ukraine, and the end of cheap Russia gas made coal too hard to quit for now. Even a government that includes the environmentalist-minded Green Party turned its back on them. Now, because the last farmer from that village moved out months ago, a court had reaffirmed the right of the authorities to forcibly remove these protesters. So they knew what was coming, and yet they stayed there. Why? Because unlike these right-wingers, they actually care. They actually care about the environment. They care about protecting these small towns in Germany. And we see these fossil fuel companies around the globe continue to throw their weight around and completely violate tribal sovereignty here in the United States for indigenous people, the water rights of citizens around the globe with fracking, and for people to stand up and take a stand knowing that there would be consequences, I think that that's really commendable. So rather than trying to turn this into some weird conspiracy, I wish that right-wingers would maybe do a little bit of research before making all of this conjecture online. But real people who care about these things know that what the activists did, it was commendable. For example, Stephen Donziger tweeted out, This type of state repression of climate activists only strengthens the movement. Solidarity, Greta. And he knows. He saw firsthand how these companies, how these fossil fuel giants will destroy you if you get in their way. So what Greta Thunberg did here is commendable. She got arrested, put her body on the line, all to draw attention to this cause. And some people might even try to defend German authorities and say, well, look, I mean, they had their cheap coal from Russia taken away as an option. So now they have to do this, at least temporarily. But I'm sorry, I don't buy that. And this is kind of what the leader of the Green Party in Germany uh, is making in defense of this open coal pit expansion. Uh, that's the case that he's making anyways, to be clear. But you all had decades. These, these governments had decades to understand that the current way that we run our economy on fossil fuels and coal, it's not sustainable. So you don't just get to say, oh my God, we had the rug pulled out from under us, so we have to do this. Now, you knew that you had to get off of fossil fuels, and yet you did nothing. And now they're desperate and they're rushing. But these activists are trying to speak truth to power and remind them that this is not sustainable. So I don't know what else to say about this story. I think that Greta Thunberg did a great thing. And even though a lot of uh, right-wingers hate her for some reason, I think that that's honestly evidence that she's very effective because they wouldn't spend so much tr time trying to tear her down had she not been such an effective communicator for the cause of climate activists. It's because she's so influential that they make her a target. And that's why they're going to continue to concoct these bizarre conspiracy theories about her. It's because, unlike these right-wing influencers, Greta Thunberg is actually a threat 
to the status quo, whereas they're the individuals who are licking the boots of these fossil fuel companies who want to continue to ravage the planet for their own personal gain. So the person who's speaking out against that, that's the person who's being subversive. That's the person who's going against the establishment, not the tools who are defending these powerful interests.